Hello, my name is Bing Ji Liu. I want to talk to you today about the Queen's Gambit decline. It was the most popular opening um, in the top levels from 2008 to 2010. It's also been played endlessly by many players uh, throughout the last 40 years. So this is one of the most, most popular positions um, ever played in chess. D4, uh, D5, C4, E6. And this is the Queen's Gambit decline because uh, when when white plays C4, uh, this is called the Queen's Gambit. And, and white is sacrificing a pawn to gain control of the center. But black refuses to take on c4, so this is why it's called the queen's gambit declined. So usually in this position, you usually play knight f3 or knight c3 to place one more attacker on the center. And then, oh, this variation, the bishop e7 variation, is, is one of the most popular played openings by the Russian team in the uh, 19, 1970s by players like Ephraim Geller. Usually people play knight f6 and in this position um, it's there are no form forced moves so many people are able to make mistakes for example if white plays bishop g5 and um, black plays something like a6 white can take c takes d5 and e takes d5 then black black will have to either have doubled pawns after bishop takes f6 and g takes f6 or if if black takes back with the queen white can take the pawn on d5 winning a pawn and and the initiative in this position the black queen is attacked so it has to move to safety at the same time the knight is attacking c7 which which if if the white knight captures the pawn on c7 and with a check then this is called a fork. A, if a fork is a tactical maneuver where you attack two pieces at once with your knight, then this black rook will be lost. So this 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 further um, ties black down with moves such as queen d6 or queen c6. Because, because the black queen will have to move to safety and at the same time defend the pawn on c7. The move queen c6 is not as good as queen d6 because queen d6 is counterattacking the knight on d5. So, so, oh well. The point is that. Uh, after white plays e4, most people know they need to control the center, so they will play move like e4 to protect the knight while controlling the center even more with one more piece attacking the square on d5. In this position, black is better here than if if black played queen c6 and white plays e4 because here black has to do less thinking. If he plays any move like bishop d6, uh, well, this would defend the pawn. But if he plays a move like bishop e7, then I think that oh, black is losing this game positionally after rook c1. After rook c1, black will have to move the queen somewhere. Not here. Knight takes. His only square is either d6 d7, e6, f6, g6, and h6. It, notice on this, these two squares are taken by the bishop and the queen, so he won't go there. Let's say queen d7, then 
You have knight takes c7 check. King King f8 to stay away from the trouble and knight takes a8. After knight takes a8, the tactics are not over yet. Even though you could you could see that your opponent can play a move like this, bishop b4 check, and then you don't interpose your rook, you don't you don't interpose your queen, you play a move like king e2 and you're safe for the rest of the game. Because now you're you're also threatening a move like a move like <coughs> a move like I'm thinking of calculating some variations. A move like mm, I'm calculating knight b6. Knight b6, attacking the queen and bishop, and but he has queen b5 check, so so we can play uh, king f th king e3 to make sure that you're safe from other checks. And notice your rook is attacking the bishop on c8. So once the queen leaves to play to check your king uh, on b5, if he if he neglects to uh, protect this bishop on c8, then you can take this bishop on c8 check. And the king has to move to his only square e7, and you can take the rook on h8. So okay, so let's let's make a move for black. So let's say he plays knight c6. You can most likely play this move very safely, and uh, he can't play queen c6 because. Because uh, um, you can play knight d5, and he plays. This is the only move. This is the only move. And then you can play a3, kicking back the bishop. He plays bishop e7. Hmm. This is actually a very good variation for black, but it's not winning. For example, you co you control the center by playing knight f3. In this position, you have uh, one more rook than your opponent, so I think that's enough to win. If you trade your pieces, knight for knight, bishop for bishop, or knight for bishop, or bishop for knight into a position where you're not getting checkmated. This is this is an eventual win for you, and that's good enough to beat someone at chess. Thanks. This is uh, Bingji Liu, uh, United States Chess Federation expert, twenty one one one. And thanks for listening and for paying attention. Uh, I'll make future uh, more future videos. Thanks.